Hi everyone, so let's now take a look at different types of consumer protection. Okay, so within this lesson we're going to look at each of these in turn, just to understand what they are, who funds them, as well as their different areas of work, okay? So let's take a look firstly at the Financial Conduct Authority. This really is the one that has the uh, overriding responsibility for what is taking place in the financial services industry. It's independent uh, as an organisation. Its remit is to regulate the actions of financial service providers. Uh, it charges member membership fees to all financial service providers and they all need to sign up to um, abiding by the uh, Financial Conduct Authority to actually operate. Okay, uh, so firstly, they authorise financial service providers. They actually say, yes, you can operate. Uh, secondly, they have a supervisory role, so they actually prioritise consumer interests and they want to make sure that financial services providers are not taking advantage of uh, consumers in any way. Okay, and then there's an enforcement area of work that they perform as well to make sure that financial service providers are abiding by certain key standards, okay, such as working in consumer interest um, and really promoting competition rather than any potential kind of collusion or potential price fixing. Uh, between financial service providers. Okay, uh, next up we've got the Financial Ombudsman Service. Now, this is a government appointed organisation which represents interests of the consumer when the consumer has a dispute with a financial services provider. So when there is a uh, dispute uh, between an individual and their financial services pro provider which cannot be resolved by dealing with the customer care department and so on uh, then the financial ombudsman may well be contacted by that customer. The financial ombudsman then has a responsibility to work on behalf of that consumer. Okay, now this is uh, fee based, okay, and fees are actually charged to all financial institutions. So that is really part of the makeup of the UK financial system. Um, now, there could be additional fees which are actually charged against an organisation, against a uh, financial services organisation. Uh, in the event that they really have behaved uh, against consumer interest, perhaps. Okay, a uh, recent case example uh, to consider might be, of course, the fact that when interest rates were redu reduced so dramatically in 2008, down to 0.5%, not all financial service uh, providers wanted to pass on such savings uh, to their customers, and various customers got together and actually got the ombudsman on board and fought against their mortgage providers. Okay, uh, finally, our area of work in relation to the ombudsman service, well, it's only involved if they, if they cannot be satisfactorily resolved in these disputes between the consumer and the provider. Okay, so that's the only time that they actually have that responsibility to work, okay? But it was fee-based uh, and those fees are paid by financial service providers. Okay, so moving on. We've then got our financial services compensation scheme. Now, this will just ensure that uh, consumers are compensated in the event of any sort of bank failure. If there was a bank crash, uh, and you couldn't get your money out, well, this financial services compensation scheme guarantees that you will get all of your money back up to £85,000, okay? So it will pay compensation to a consumer at the financial services if the provider cannot do so, okay? So it's government funded, uh, and it also protects all bank deposits, as we've said, they're up to 85,000. So if you uh, are in a nice fortunate position and you have savings which are greater than that, what do you wanna do? Well, you need to split it between a couple of different banks, of course. Okay, so then we've got the Office of Fair Trading. Now, the Office of Fair Trading is really about ensuring um, that there is a competition between, uh, between different firms in different industries. Uh, and previously, the Office of Fair Trading has made sure that, yes, there is uh, sufficient competition within the financial services industry. Okay, its remit has recently changed, however, okay, and we'll come to that in just a second. So it's a government organisation that really regulates and supervises all markets to make sure 
uh, really that there is enough competition and there are fair, fair trading practices taking place and consumers are not being exploited. You know, it would be no good having all of the banks getting together and saying, oh, let's all charge a 5% mortgage rate. Uh, and then we can really make a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, they, they previously have policed that sort of role. Um, so it's government funded and the OFT aims to promote fair competition and practice, but in 2014, the responsibility uh, for this supervisory role in the financial services industry uh, went to the Financial Conduct Authority, okay? Uh, and we can see this supervision area prioritizing consumer interest there. Nevertheless, it, it's on the specification, so I've included it here. Okay, so let's move it on. Uh, consumer credit legislation. So these, when it comes to legislation, we're talking about laws, of course. Uh, so laws passed by the UK government to enforce uh, regulation of any firm offering credit to consumers okay so there isn't any sort of uh, funding provided because they are laws and you have to abide by them okay so any firm offering credit um, will be uh, subject to these laws so if you consider for instance credit cards or higher purchase agreements well what what needs to actually happen in any credit situation is you need to be very very specific about what APR is going to be charged it's the annual percentage rate of interest how much that will be you also need to lay down exactly how much the actual monthly repayments will be to ensure that consumers truly understand the products that they are signing up for. It is really about just making sure there is transparency and customers are not sort of bewildered by these uh, great big loan applications and mortgages that it really, really does simplify it in language that most people would then be able to understand. Okay, um, so that is the, uh, the importance of these consumer credit laws and it just helps to ensure that consumers are not being taken advantage of. Right, there we go. I hope that's all right, guys. Thanks ever so much. See you next time.